Uh, hello. Uh, today what I want to do is cover how to uh, use Python programming to solve uh, Hardy Cross pipe problems. And I'm going to be using uh, example 211 in uh, Water Resources Engineering by David Chin. Um, but generally speaking, you can uh, use this approach um, for any pipe network problem that you want to solve with Hardy Cross. And so um, I've already written some of the code. Uh, and you can pause the video and sort of follow along um, if you'd like to use these other functions. And so basically the idea is that we have this flow update equation that has a sum of uh, this R value multiplied by the flow, uh, multiplied by the absolute value of the flow in the numerator of the equation, and uh, a similar term in the denominator of the equation. You take both of those to do the sums, divide them by each other, and multiply by negative one. And so what I've done is I've kind of written code that breaks that up into pieces. And so if you look here, the first uh, function definition is basically, and we can get rid of this uh, random comment, is uh, the calculation of this R factor. Some textbooks call it K, but I'm using the chin notation uh, that's used, that's calling it R. And so you can see it's 8, uh, 8.0 times F times L divided by G times pi squared times the diameter uh, raised to the fifth power. Okay, and so I've written this little function and we'll be able to use that later on. I did the same thing with the numerator and the denominator terms, but notice, and you know, you can name these functions different things. Uh, this is just a single calculation for one pipe of the R times the Q times the absolute value of Q. Um, you'll see below how we are going to do a loop and do all the pipes uh, across um, a particular loop of the network. So here's a function for the numerator, a function for the denominator, and then also a function for the flow correction factor, which is simply this, like that sum uh, for the numerator divided by the denominator times uh, minus one. Okay, and so um, let's talk then about the next function, and we'll do this one in a little bit more detail, this, uh, what I'm calling the loop iteration. And so the idea behind this is that you have a list of um, values for R for all the different pipes, a list of values for Q for all the different pipes, and then an optional uh, list of names for each pipe, and that's, I'm using it as optional, so I am setting it as a, there's a default value here. So if you don't provide this parameter, you can still use the function. And so then what we're doing here is we're basically doing a running sum calculation for the numerator and the denominator. So I, I declare a local variable that is equal to zero, and then I'm going in and I'm incrementally adding uh, the, uh, the different terms into that sum. And so, I've created this loop here that is going to loop through all the pipes that are in the particular network that you're using. And for each one, there's a simple call to the numerator function where you have to pass in the n and then the, the jth member of the pipes uh, list and the jth member of the, um, uh, the flow list. So the two lists there for all the pipes. And so you do this and you calculate these sums separately and then the last thing is you call this this third function that has the flow correction factor that gives you this delta q which is what we were um, looking for and so then the last step uh, is in this function is to basically um, update the flow uh, estimate and so the, the original flow estimates were stored in pipes q and so all you're doing is basically adding that delta to them now, the way that this textbook explains this is that you have you have to pick a flow direction in each loop, and there is going to be positive flows and there's going to be negative flows. And so um, as long as you keep that sign correction uh, correct, then in that case, you know, you can do this calculation, which is just a quick arithmetic adding. So in other words, if this is negative, it should take that into account uh, and so forth. And then the return of this function is simply those updated flows. And so the way you can use the um, 
this pipe's name, by the way, is you can make yourself a little output function if you want to. So I can make a little print statement that says, say, the flow in pipe uh, string placeholder is, you know, some value. And then I'll go ahead and pass in the name of the jth pipe and the, f the value of flow that you have. So that, for example, this is something that you can put in if you want to do some debugging uh, for yourself. Uh, <clears throat> it's important to know when you put these print statements in, by the way, where they go. So this print statement is put in after you've updated the flow. So that's important. Um, but you could also put one in uh, before you do the update if you wanted to just check to see that the flows were in there. So for the time being, I'm going to comment that out. But it'll be in there if we need it later on. Okay, so um, so this is the loop iteration, and <clears throat> so that's going to be the last function that I'm going to declare. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically write a loop to solve uh, the particular problem in the book. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, the first thing in my main function here, uh, if you are reading along, is that well other than just this, these uh, little print statements that I did. I'm showing a quick example of how to use one of these functions. And this is important if you're writing these little functions to test them. So for example, I can have some variables in here. You pass them in to this calculate R function and uh, you end up getting a value. And then here's a sample of how to kind of output that to the screen. And we'll, we'll write similar code uh, when we're solving the real problem. Okay, and so um, let me just check my notes here real quick. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just kind of create a bunch of print statements here that are going to kind of guide us through what we're doing. So um, the first one is I'm just going to tell everybody that this is example 211 in the Chin Water Resources Engineering book, third edition. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to... Um, create a couple of arrays that are going to store the, the data that are for this function or for this problem. And so now I realize that this isn't the greatest way to do it, but what I've kind of done is just hard coded the name of the loop into the name of the array. So in other words, I'm just going to create some variables that are called, like I'm going to type the, the number one to indicate that like one means loop one. So I'm going to create an array of names. Um, and so the, the figure in the book basically has the nodes named. So we have 1 to 4, 3 to 4, and 1 to 3. And so the names don't necessarily matter. They are just going to be there to help us make our print statements look pretty and that kind of thing. So the important one, the important thing here is the actual flow guess values. And so um, I am creating a variable called um, Q guess array, and I'll make one for both loops. So loop one will have the word one in the um, name of the variable. And so to declare it, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the um, NumPy array as my data type. Um, and so you'll see up here we've imported NumPy as NP, and I have the NP array um, uh, declaration. And so um, just kind of following the syntax, what you'll see is that I'm going to type in the information for these different pipes in this order always. So pipe 1, 4 first, then 3, 4, then 1, 3. So um, pipe 1, 4 we're going to guess that the flow is 70 and then the next guess is going to be that the flow is negative 30 and the final guess is that that flow um, in the last pipe is going to be positive 35. Um, so you know um, it's kind of beyond the scope of this video to talk about how you make these guesses but just remember that when you do the guess you have to maintain continuity coming in and out of the node so what goes into a node must come out uh, and so forth. So those guesses are just actually directly from the book and we'll use them uh, for our purposes. 
And then the other uh, array that I want to make is I want to make an array of the R values. And conveniently, in this problem, the R, R values are actually given already. So we don't need to go through the hassle of actually calculating them. It says that pipe 1.4 has an R value of 6, pipe uh, 3.4 has an R value of 5, and then pipe 1.3 has an R value of 3. Okay, and so that is all the data for the first loop. But one thing to keep in mind, and I'm just going to make a note to myself here, is that we need to check if uh, any pipes in loop 1 are shared with loop 2. And you'll see how I'll have a little, um, you'll see how I'll have a little uh, correction for that when we actually do the calculation. Um, so uh, the next uh, step is to enter the data for loop two. And uh, for brevity's sake, I'm going to pause the video uh, while I type that stuff in and then uh, return in a minute. OK, we're back. Um, so you'll see the information for uh, loop two has been typed in. One thing to keep in mind, and this is what I was hinting at in this note here, is that loop one, loop one has uh, pipe one three in it. And you'll can, you can see that the guess equals 35. Well, then loop two has the same pipe, but now the guess is negative because um, of the sign convention that we're using. And so when you solve the Hardy cross method for loop one, you need to take whatever the final flow is for this pipe and kind of inject it into your steps for loop two. And so we'll do that now. Okay, so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to kind of just set a quick while loop that's going to have a fixed number of iterations. Um, and that's just kind of um, the way that I sort of set up the, um, the code. There's different ways to do it, obviously, but um, this is kind of a straightforward way to do it. So I'm going to have a variable called iteration. It's going to be set to zero initially, and then we're going to do, now let's do 10 iterations uh, here. So the, the main meat of this is a while loop that basically um, is going to say uh, that your um, iteration is less than your number of iterations. You can also set this up as a for loop if you wanted to. But uh, here goes. So the first thing that we need to do was we need to do one iteration for loop one. OK. And so. Remember that the, the that iteration function returns uh, a flow array, okay? And so what we're going to see is we're going to see that I'm actually going to replace whatever is in my guess array with whatever this thing comes up with. So the name of the function that we wrote is Hardy Cross Loop Iteration. And PyCharm, by the way, I'm using Python 2.7 and uh, within Anaconda and PyCharm. A community edition, uh, as you can see, very good uh, programs um, that we have to pass variables in. So the first variable is going to be n, which we're going to just say is two here for the purposes of the flow conditions in this problem. And then the pipes r uh, variable is going to be that array that we created um, for loop one. Similarly, the guess array is going to be passed in for the um, for the q part. And then for the names, it's actually optional that we do this, but we've already put them in, so we might as well pass them into the function. And so that saves you a lot of work. So that actually runs the whole uh, thing um, for the first loop. But the last step before we move on is that we need to adjust the fact that these two loops share a pipe. So before you get started with the second, like your iteration for the second loop, we need to do a bit of bookkeeping and basically um, put in. Now, Python is zero index, so this is index zero, one, and two. So you'll see that the index two of loop two is equivalent to index two of loop one. So we're going to say that index two of loop two, okay, is going to be equal to the negative, because remember the sign convention of uh, index two of the first loop. Okay. And once we do that, then we're actually ready to um, do the next thing. Okay. And so, uh, so we've done one uh, loops worth of calculations. Uh, watch part two.